please welcome Sutton Foster. so much for being here and I'm so excited to talk to you today about your book. Um, this is going to be huge. This is going to be a giant New York Times best-selling <laughs> phenomenon. It's, um, it's ironic that it's called Hooked because it, you, you open it and I read it all in one sitting. I, I could not put it down. Did you know it was going to be that gripping <laughs> no. when you wrote I mean, it? No, I'm thrilled that it was. I, 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 I don't. I didn't know. I just knew that I. I felt like I had a story that I wanted to tell, and, um, and I knew that I wanted to tell it through the lens of things that I I had made. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a memoir. It's a memoir. It's my life. It's it's how I got to be the person I am today. Um, but each chapter is framed around um, something that I've made with my hands, like whether it's a blanket I made when I was going through my divorce or waiting to adopt my daughter or the cookies that I made with my ex-husband's uh, mom. So this is actually, there's a chapter about, about this in the book. This is my ex-husband's mom's Christmas cookie recipe and I make it every year. It's Mama Borel's Christmas cookies. And so it's just, the book is about too, it's like, you know, you can take different life ingredients and you can create your own recipe. And it's, it provides a window into telling, into storytelling that, um, that felt very authentic to me. And it's ironic you call it crafting. Um, I told you this the last time we were, you were here. Sutton, your stuff is not crafting. It's like, museum level works of art. I mean, speaking of, of things that I've made, I actually made you something. It's officially the holiday season, so here you go. <laughs> oh, Sutton! Oh my God. It's a, it's a toilet paper roll cover. Oh my God! <laughs> I can't believe I have a Sutton Foster original. <laughs> um, okay, I, it, it's hard to even sum up how beautiful your book is. Um, I loved the way that you spoke about your relationship with your mother, which is a very important subject for me. What would you like people to know going into the book to reading hmm. about you and your mom? My mom was a, she was a challenging figure in my life. Um, my, my mother was, she had undiagnosed mental illness. So that was, that was what, that was my normal. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we, we believe she, she had agoraphobia. She was afraid of the world and, and felt like the world was against her. Um, interesting, and interestingly enough, my brother and I are both uh, Broadway performers and like live a very um, external, yeah, existence. Um, but I think what I'm most proud of with the book is that I was able to. I mean, I've, I've worked so hard in my life to to accept my mother and accept her limitations. Um, I always I have this acceptance without expectation. But one of the thing, one of the gifts I think in writing the book for me was that. I had focused so many years on her um, limitations and also her uh, and, and my frustrations and my disappointments. But, but in writing the book, I found her strengths. I, I found enormous gratitude for her, for what she, she gave to me, what, and, and how much pain that she was, she was in. Um, so it was incredibly cathartic for me. Now, I feel like I got to my 40s. I had two kids. I was like, oh, the baggage with me and my mom, it is gone. I've worked through it. I have nothing but gratitude. I can see her positives. However, I swore that I would not be the same kind of parent she was. And truthfully, I honestly found myself 
finding some similarities Absolutely. with her. Absolutely. And did you find that too? Of course. Like, you're, I'll never be like my mom. Oh I my know. God, I'm like my mom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I always said the same thing. I was like, I will, I'm gonna do it all completely different. But then you're just inherently, it's part of your DNA. I mean, one of the things that helps me stay balanced, honestly, is, is crocheting, is crafting, is something that can be incredibly internal and very small. And I, I end up giving a lot to the world, right? I'm, I'm in rehearsals right now for the Music Man. Oh. Um, it's funny because I can't wait to see that show. I'm it's been a long time coming. We've been waiting for over two years. It's, unbelie it's unbelievable. I cannot wait for you to see it. We're all so I'm excited. So, I'm so excited. It's the hottest ticket in town. I mean, you have no idea. I'm such a fan of your work. And I loved the story um, when you get into going into the journey of becoming a mom. It's a few chapters. No, that's my daughter. <laughs> That's a real picture, yeah. No, I did. So I, I, when I started my journey into motherhood, it was later in life, and we, we hit many struggles, um, went through several rounds of IVF, and finally ended up pursuing adoption. And, uh, and that, as soon as we started pursuing adoption, it's when all the roadblocks and obstacles kind of got out of our way. And um, yeah, I have a beautiful four-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Emily. Emily, yeah, she's the best. She's the best. And you know what is so much fun? The best part, the best part is that I get to now share all of this stuff with her. So like we, she's like, mommy, let's go do a craft. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, my dreams are coming true, you know.